Inkscape has a lot of different features. Just take a look around the canvas on your screen while you're using the application. There are a lot of options. So, obviously, sometimes there are going to be little features hidden away in the menus. But fear not, Button Press Graphics is here to point you in the right direction. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another Inkscape tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you a few of the features that aren't actively advertised within Inkscape and you would be forgiven for missing them completely. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now the first thing that I want to talk about is the select feature or select same, select size, for example. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Bear with me and I will show you exactly what I mean. As you can see on screen right now, I've just got a mass of different shapes and colors all jumbled together. This is simply going to be used as a representation of one of your designs. So there is lots of different layers, there are lots of different colors, there are lots of different shapes and stroke styles and everything like that. Well, there is a way that you can select all of the ones you want without doing the manual task of selecting them all. For example, the usual way, if you wanted to select all of the shapes that are green, for example, you would hold shift, and then select each one of the green shapes. But if there are shapes underneath this one, for example, there's a green circle there and I can't quite see it. You have to start messing about by holding Alt in order to select the object underneath. And that way it can become a little bit complicated, a little bit fiddly. So instead of doing all that select one shape come to edit scroll down to where it says select same now as you can see from the little drop box here there are multiple different things you can do you can select everything that has the same fill and stroke as your initial selection you can select all of the different shapes that have the same fill color. Again, the same, but with the stroke color. The stroke style. So you can select all of the shapes that have the same width of stroke or the same color. And you can select it by the same object as defined by the shape of the object. So, for example, if we was to select fill color as you can see all of the shapes that have the same fill color have now been selected but what if you don't want to select by fill color and you want to select by shape well again make your initial selection by clicking on the object you want to use as a reference go back to edit select same and this time let's go with the object type. Now what you can see here is it has selected all of the cubes. So when it comes to selecting the object type, this is still registered as the same object, a rectangle. So because of that, it will select all of these that are not quite circles. They are just rectangles with curved edges. The next little feature I want to talk about is copying and pasting. Normally you would right click and select duplicate or copy. But in this case, we have got two different words, two varying colors and two varying sizes. So what if we only want to copy one aspect? Well, this is something that can be done very easily. 
Now, for example, imagine I wanted the word copy to be the same size as the word paste. And that way I could stack it perfectly on top. This is a method that a lot of designers will use because when you actually make the word the same size, regardless to how many letters are in that word, you can stack them on top like a big block of words and you will see it in many, many advertisements. Now you could do what you've just seen me doing and you could manually do this. You could even set a guide like this and snap it onto the ends and then make sure that it lines up perfectly. However, there is a simpler way. If we was to select the word paste, right click and copy, that is now on the clipboard. And we can use it as we normally would by holding Ctrl and B, you can select another copy. However, there is a simple way of doing this. Now that we have the word paste on the clipboard, if we select the word copy, come to our edit menu, scroll down to where it says paste dot dot dot, not the paste above it. And as you can see, we now have some options. We can paste in place. This is a kind of feature that you would normally see in applications like Adobe Illustrator. You can paste on the page. You can paste the style. You can paste the size, the width on its own, the height on its own, whereas size is the width and height together. You can individually separate it into the size, width and height. So for example, for this one, imagine I just wanted to see the word copy in exactly the same size as the word paste. We come to size, select size, and not much changed on the screen, but now if we was to layer it underneath, you can see it is the same size. Next, I would like to talk about the dropper tool and a little added feature that not many people seem to know about. Now, as you know, when you use the dropper tool, you are basically trying to select a color from the design that's already on the screen and then use the color from that point. So, for example, if I was to select this fuchsia colored box, but I want to select part of this gradient to change the color, we will come to the dropper tool. And if we select this side of the box, obviously it's going to be blue. But if we was to select this side of the box, it will be closer to black. Just like so. So in the middle, it will be around neutral. This is how the dropper tool works. But did you know you can click and hold like so to select a group? Of pixels then the computer will decide what is the average color from that entire selection and as you can see if I was to do it over here you get more of an average rather than the pixel that you're currently selecting also it is worth mentioning when using this method that if you but for some reason end up clicking and dragging and part of that circle goes over the box or over your object into the white of the canvas, then what you will notice is this one will still match the color, but it will also have a lower opacity. For example, if I was to come back to the dropper tool and I was to do a circle where most of the circle contains nothing but the transparent background and only a little bit of 
the blue from the bottom shape, as you can see, it's now far lower on the opacity. Just something to keep in mind. And finally, the last thing I want to show you is within the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. So when you're in the node tool, you can select an object and of course nodes will appear which allow you to manipulate that shape in any way that you want. Once you are happy with the shape, you can then of course object to path. But now you have all these extra nodes, you have to make sure that the nodes are correct. Now usually if you wanted this top node to be rounded you would have to come up to the properties toolbar at the top and select to make it smooth and as you can see using the handles you have now got a smooth point if you wanted to take it back to the way it was you could come back up to the same icons up on the top properties toolbar you could select the corners and now both of the handles are individual and you can reset them pretty much to whatever you want like so but did you know by simply holding control as you select one of the nodes you can change the node type very easily just like this so there you have it my friends, four different features that you might not necessarily know about within Inkscape. I hope they come in handy for you and of course if you would like button press graphics to do any designs for you then you can get in touch using the information I'm going to leave in the description. Also, if you want to be part of the Creative Corner, I would love to see your artwork. All the information for how to send me your designs is going to be in the description also. If you liked this video and you found it informative, please consider giving me a subscribe. And until next time, I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell. Say thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.